in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty. Going to the book of John in St. Luke, Prince of Peace. Trouble And if you would just go to verse 35. Verse 35. Just the very short, nothing long, nothing drawn out. Simply says, Jesus, yeah, Jesus wept. Go to St. Luke chapter 19. Verse 41. And when he was come near, thank like Luke 19, 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Saying, if thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round. Keep thee in on every side. Shall lay thee even with the ground. And thy children within thee. They shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You may be seated. I want to talk for the duration of my time from this question that arrives in St. John 11 and St. Luke 19. What made a grown man What made a grown man cry? I would like to briefly jump over to Hebrews. You don't have to go, but you can write this down and read it at your leisure. I would like to go to Hebrews chapter 5 and just pull out some information for us to digest. I try to 
if God says the same, elaborate a little bit more on Wednesday. But it says in Hebrews chapter 5, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant. And on them that are out of the way. But that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought as for the people. So also for himself to offer for sin. And no man taketh this honor unto himself. But he that is called of God as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. Unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Granted, this is not period, but I want to stop there and I'll leave it alone. You can read it at your leisure to verse number 10. I would like to work on this not just with the focus of men, but also the woman. Because we have become accustomed to English narratives in the scriptures, the English version that was written by England, we don't always search the scriptures to find out the origin of scripture. So even though most of us would learn from the King James Version and also know that there are other versions of Bible that are out there. The National Version and all these revised versions are simply trying to give you an understanding of what the original text actually said from the Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic. So sometimes we lose the understanding of what God wants us to know based upon the fact we won't research what we read. We'll accept what somebody will say from the pulpit as gospel without going to research scripture to make sure it is verifiable and authentic. I want to try to take time to help us to better understand this the way God gave it to me. I don't have enough time to do it, but I'm going to try to get as far as I can so that we understand the scripture better in context and its intent. Amen. Thus we have before us, we'll start with the book of John, the gospel according to John the disciple, the beloved disciple. Where Jesus is described doing something that we have all done. Yet we need to look closely. Amen. Promise will arrive safely. Look closely at why Jesus did what we have all done. Just because you did what someone else did doesn't mean you had the same intent. Doesn't mean that you had the same purpose. 
we say we want to be like Jesus. I know most of the saints don't know the old school songs. My grandfather used to sing that song, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, how I long to be like him, so meek and lowly. Okay, so like I said, they don't sing those kind of songs anymore. But we want to look closely at why Jesus did what he did to better understand if when we do the same thing Jesus did in scripture, we are becoming more like Jesus and not denying Jesus. Because on Sunday or while we are around church people, we have the form of godliness. But when we get in trouble, that's when the truth comes if we've got the power or not. No, it's youth day. Stick with me, young people. This for y'all, too. We come upon an unusual moment wherein Jesus is confronted with a situation that is unlike all the others. And that he is dealing with a family that he is closely knit with. You know the context of this, we have all, if we've been around any church, know the story of Lazarus, and Lazarus come forth, and he died, and he was dead for a day, but I want to dig a little deeper come on, come on. so that we understand why Jesus did what he did to help us to better understand why God doesn't always show up when we call him. I promise I'm coming. Come Amen. Because sometimes we become discouraged in the wait. Yeah. Yeah. I prayed and God didn't show up. Amen. I called him and God didn't answer. But when I prayed for someone else, he came through. And I called him on behalf of somebody else, another believer, someone else who came for prayer or for intercession. God showed up in no time but for me. There are some things I'm waiting for. Anybody in here waiting for some things? Talk back to me. I'm hard of hearing. I said, anybody waiting for some things? We have heard how Mary and Martha feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come at Jesus with some weight. Amen. We got a relationship with you. We sent a letter to you and you have not come on, come on. responded. Come on. And the problem is, Dick and Lou, if I got the letter to you, that means I know how far you are. Because I know where right. you are. Right. It is troubling when I know where to find them. Right. But he don't respond. I, I know, I know you, you hardcore apostolic, you, you're not going to agree with this, you know. You're going to pull out all the scriptures when you call him. He will answer, call on Jesus. He will answer prayer, and he will. When he get ready. I got any real parents in here? I, I said real parents. You know your child don't really want them. And they just pester. Mommy, daddy, mom, pa, whatever they call you. They got a whole dictionary full of different names. Mom, mama, mommy. However they call you. But you don't respond automatically because you know, according to the sound in which they are trying to get your attention, they don't really need nothing. I, I don't have the privilege. I know some of you are grandparents. I don't have that privilege as of yet. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I see the grandparents do differently from what they did with their children. Yeah. 
Yeah, you be wondering who in the world is this parent, because that's not who. Tell my children all the time, I don't know the mother and father y'all talk to. I don't know all that hugging and greeting and loving and giving money. I never saw. Never mind, I don't want to digress. Let me leave that alone. But you know as a parent that the child don't want nothing. Then there comes a time when you can tell by the voice. Something is wrong. The trouble is, we got the letter to Jesus in time knowing where he is and how long it would take to get the response back. And you can tell from the tone of the letter that this is a crisis. This is serious. We're not just saying hello. We're not just sending a greeting. We're not just saying hi. We're not just checking on you. We need you. You've been there for other people. I done seen you show up for people who don't know you like I know you. I know you're going to show up for me now. Moving forward, I won't wear this out. Moving forward, Jesus doesn't respond. And to whom he responds, the response doesn't make sense. Until you look at Hebrews chapter 5. He tells the disciples, Lazarus is sick. He gets the second letter. He gone. Second time he says, he sleeping. Disciples don't understand. Thus, Hebrews chapter 5, ignorant. I know y'all don't like the word of being in that Bible, do you? Ignorant. Not understanding what it is he's saying. They say, well, if he sleeps, and do well, leave him alone. Because they don't understand that the one talking is not talking earthly standards. They think sleep, he'll wake up eventually, and he will again, but not on the earthly terms where I can shake you and wake you up. He says to them, this is all happening so that the glory of God. Amen. You can go back and read St. John 11 when you got time. So that the glory of God can be revealed. Yes. Yes. Revealed means not everybody is going to be able to see what's going on. I ain't got a lot of time to play with y'all today because my time is gone already. But look at somebody and tell them whatever's going on with you. The glory of God is going to be revealed. Now most people don't understand glory. And I've explained this because we preached on it a few times. Taught on it as well. Glory is the revealed manifestation of God. It is not hidden. It is revealed. When we say there is a sky. You are able to go outside and look at the sky, it manifests itself to you. But blind people can't see it. Or find somebody that'll talk back to me. So the Bible says, because a blind man cannot see the sun does not mean that the sun does not exist. Which simply means to the believer in here in whom I'm talking to right now and I know you a little slow, that's alright, we gonna call you over and get you here in time. It simply means God is getting ready to show you some stuff going on in your life that is meant for him to reveal his glory. Got a lot of time. I'm trying to walk it quick. Mary and Martha can't see it. 
I gotta find somebody else. Isn't there somehow people can be related to the Messiah? To the Son of God and still cannot see. Isn't there something? Yes, since you ain't understand that, let me dig deeper. Isn't there something how you can go to church all the time and you still don't understand what it is God trying to do? Sisters don't understand it, and I need to hop on this real quick before I get to the drive of this message and get to the closing. We always talk about how Mary and Martha talk. Uh, they were upset. You had a been here. He wouldn't have died. But I want to also bring up the fact that I'm sure Lazarus had to be feeling some type of way as his life got weaker and weaker. Wondering where is or oh, thank you for talking. Where is the Messiah? But where is Jesus? He, he healing the sick and raising all these other folk. Why he not showing up for the one who loves him? My God, Lord, I wish I had a real church I could talk to in here. Anybody I'm talking about, you love him for real. But it looks like he's making you go through changes. Quiet as his kept. Having a relationship with God is not all beds of roses, baby. Sometimes I got to go through stuff and people see me going through it and they looking like, but you're the one that be making the most noise. You're the one running around the church the most. You're the one screaming the loudest. You shouldn't be messed up. You shouldn't be afflicted. You should have more than what you have. You should be better than you are. You should feel better than you feel. Look better than you look. But they don't understand that I am. I'm wondering myself where he is. Because only them who are close can understand that there is a waiting game when God is getting ready to reveal something that everybody is going to get blown away with. Can't stay here long. Just nudge somebody that'll talk to you real good and tell them I've been waiting for God to do some stuff. And I'm happy to report today that God is getting ready to blow my mind. And when he blow my mind, keep watching because it's going to blow your mind. Jesus has shown up for people who have already died. I don't have enough time to play. But in St. Luke, Jesus comes up on a funeral procession. If you understand Jewish custom, the day you died, you had to be buried within 24 hours of that death. So they always had coffins waiting, just in case. The widow woman's son dies. Jesus happens to show up while they have the son already in the coffin. Walks up to the mother and said, you can stop crying. I'm going to find me a real church I can talk to. Walks up, lays his hands on the carpet and says, get up, son. Gets the son out the carpet and brings him back to the mother and says, you can go home and celebrate. You got to keep in mind Jairus' talk. Father said, I just need you to speak over he said, I come to the house. The, the woman with the issue of blood interrupts. While Jesus is on the way, he gets a message. The father gets a message and said, Your daughter dead. Ain't no need to go. Jesus said, Take me. I'm all, I promise I'm coming. Tell somebody, don't let the news bother you. Yeah, some of y'all need to talk louder because you know you got a whole lot of.
Jesus and Hebrews chapter 5 and see he's the one with the real problem. I can't stay here long. Tell somebody God is the one with the real problem. I know, I know y'all scared to talk. I said holler at somebody and tell them God is the one with the real problem. Because Jesus can show up until it's time for glory. It's not that he didn't want to respond to the letters. It's not that he didn't want to show up before he died. But he had an assignment. <laughs> Gotta find me a church I can talk to in here. I said, he had an assignment. Y'all ain't ready in here. I said, another neighbor and tell him God's got an assignment. <laughs> Some of y'all scared to talk like you got in the Holy Ghost. I said, tell somebody, God's got an assignment. He's got to make sure glory shows up. I get out of here. I can't stay here. Jesus shows up. I'm got, I got the move. Jesus shows up. And the Bible said when they heard he was coming, they went and met him. See, folks don't read the scriptures, so you think Jesus showed up at the house. That's not how the story went. They heard he was coming. Tell somebody something coming. I got to get out of here. I don't have enough time to really play with y'all to get you to understand what God's trying to do. When you hear he's coming, you ain't got to wait. Are crucial. He shows up. 
talking 33, 34. He began saying, show me. Church won't talk to me. He said, show me where you lay down. He showed up. Somebody in here who feels like you're just barely making it 